Hi, this is Chris from Orange Coast College's art department covering Wacom's Express Key Remote in use with the Cintiq Pro. Now that we have stands that articulate in our digital art studio, it's more important to be able to use the Express Key so that you can move the tablet wherever you would like. This here is the Express Key and what it does is it brings your favorite or most often used functions to a remote and you can move it around on the surface of the tablet or you can leave it on the side where it's magnetized. So right in here, it's magnetized in this section for the left side and this section for the right side. Down here, no magnetized but it's got a little bit of a tacky surface, so it'll stay in place on a slightly tilted tablet, but if you tilt it all the way up, you need to have it right there or right there. Now, you may be wondering, how do I know what these buttons do? Well, first of all, I want to ask you to touch the upper left button right here. And what that should do is give you this popover diagram and this diagram tells you what all the other buttons do. Uh, some can, things that may be confusing, the ring will just sense you moving your finger or thumb around it and adjust which element you've got programmed for it. In fact the ring will do three different things and the way to change which it's doing is to press this central button and it'll light up which one of the three so you can think of one two and three so it's on one now it's on two now it's on three and currently i've got number one program for zooming number two for brush size and number three for rotate i think the middle one uh, for brush size is going to be the most useful now let's dive in to each button to see what it does. It's a little bit confusing with this diagram. You have to really follow the lines across because on the bottom there's essentially three columns of buttons. The left column, then that center lozenge shape, and then the right column. So we should start with the first one, the button that it takes to actually see this diagram and that's settings. So you click it on to see it, click it off again uh, to make it go away. Working our way down the left column, the second button there is deselect. And the button below that, the third button with the vertical line is select all. So I use those a lot. I hit select all and then I hit deselect a lot. So you may know them on the keyboard as Command A and Command D, uh, but now they're also on your Express key. Uh, the bottom on the left column is the combination of control and option. And I've got this here, and with the brush button just to the right, because when you're in the brush tool, if you hold down control and option, you can affect the size, and if you're in a round brush, the hardness of the edge and so uh, that helps get you right to that size and hardness that you're looking for. Alright, so that's the left column. Let's circle back up the right column. So the lower right is the brush key so it's just to call that brush up when you need it. The same as hitting B. Uh, the next one up from there is switching the foreground and background color. Also the X key when you're using the keyboard. So that switches foreground and background. The next one up from there is default color. So the foreground as black and the background as white. Those ones are often a combination. So use the default color and then you can switch them easily. And then the top of the right column is the enter button. And that's for whenever you're, you know, typing or writing or there's some response needed you can click that top right one and get the enter button. Let's come back around to look at that center lozenge column. 
So the top three are the some of the main keys that you use as modifiers. So the top one is shift, the second one down is command, the third one down is space. And sometimes you might use these in combination. And then the bottom of that center column is free transform or command T. So that's also a very frequently used function when I'm painting. Coming back up to the top ring, the outer ones, the 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock, if you will, are undo and redo. And the undo is stepping as many steps as your history holds. So you can keep hitting it to undo and hit the right side to redo. So it's kind of a back and forth on the 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock. Then the uh, 11 o'clock up there is zoom in, and the 1 o'clock is zoom out. So you can kind of use those in combination as well. Then diving inward, the broad ring is touch sensitive, as shown in this video, where you move your finger around it in a circle, and it will do one of the three commands, the zoom, brush size, or rotate, whichever one you've selected. If you're wondering how to select it, you use that very center of the ring button, and that's kind of a three-way toggle. You just keep hitting that button and moving the light around until it's where you want it. And then the last one at the six o'clock position is the radial button. Let's see how that works. And wherever my cursor is when I press this button, I'll have a popover radial menu. And this gives me more options. So I've got sort of our second tier of important things. Uh, brush, type, screen mode, fill with background, fill with foreground, gradient, lasso, and marquee. So we can um, get that wherever we are. We hit this button right here, it'll go away, but that'll pop over wherever our cursor is. So if our cursor's over here and I hit the button, it pops up and it's handy right wherever you're currently working. So that's another nice access to even additional features. Now, sometimes this remote may run out of juice. It holds about a five hour charge and it will stay on for about 30 minutes at a time. Normally when you find it, it'll be off because it'll have put itself to sleep. So I'm gonna turn it off by sliding that button to the left and that turns it off. That's also how you turn it on. So I'm gonna do it one more time. You see that blue light come on right here? It stays on for a few seconds and then goes off, but it's on and you know it's on because one of those three ring lights is lit up. Now it could come up where the charge is running low and an orange light will start flashing over here. And the way to charge that back up is by taking a micro USB cable, plugging it into one of the side USB ports, and then on the top plugging in the micro USB. So I'm going to plug in right there. I can keep using it while it charges and you might notice the orange light is on when it's charged in full. Now I'm going to turn off that diagram and show you one more thing. If you come in tight here this icon right here will show you the charge. So right now it says EK remote charged, but it'll give you a percentage when you're partially charged. So you can check that guy out at your leisure. So the object here is if you're working with the tablet at a angle or location where it's inconvenient for you to access your keyboard, you can at least use the most common Photoshop actions, shortcuts, hotkeys by accessing them through the Express Key Remote. I hope that helps. I encourage you to give it a try 
and hopefully that'll help you make great art.